again. A blazing ruin. You say that you were only fooling. Don't walk away. Don't do me wrong. Don't. Why does he keep going back there? we will look into it. Yes, I'm aware that it's an election year. Keep a hold of your hat, Counselor. Now is not the time to lose your nerve. It would appear that someone has hocked a rose gold wedding ring, a matching engagement ring. Sound familiar? Deirdre Muller. Press the pawnbroker and see what you can find out. The address is 348 South Main Street. The Muller case goes before the grand jury next week, and the DA does not want any egg on his face. Then get out to the railroad depot on Santa Fe Avenue. We have another poor unfortunate found this morning beside a railroad line. Forty-year-old white woman. Right, Skipper. That woman at the train yard, she was not looking fully aware of her surroundings at all. Another body and Deirdre Muller's ring. The Emperor may soon have to come to terms with the fact that he's wearing no clothes. What exactly did you get that book of riddles shoved up your ass, Phelps? Is that what your old man paid college tuition for? Well, I mean, there's a lot of evidence yeah, to show down. that Secondly, there's a little bit more at play here, so... The ring! The ring is showing up again. That is... interesting. Speaking of rings, the last case didn't have a ring. Right? The, the lady, she was not naked, and she she didn't have a ring torn off of her. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. Fine. Where are we headed? Actually, I want to drive because it's the beginning of a new case. Pawnbroker, rail yard. Pawnbroker. You've got to admit, this is looking odd. Yeah, anyone could pawn a ring. But if you take it along with all of the other indicators... Cole, Hugo Moeller was identified by the school's groundkeeper. He's our guy. Witnesses have fingered the wrong guy before. He ran, for God's sakes. And he always maintained he was set up. Why? Okay, if I were the killer, why would I pawn off the ring, though? Because I'm so confident that the police can't catch me. I'm actually actively giving them a lead. That could be a thing, because... From what we've seen, that guy is quite, quite cocky right now. I'm surprised they were even tracking this. That they even found that this ring was being pawned off here. How can I help you boys? Detectives Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. You have a rose gold wedding and engagement ring? David Bremner. Am I gonna get something for this pledge? Gave that bum money, now you guys are gonna leave me short. How much did you give? Bum. 50 bucks? Try another number. 20? Try 10. And feel lucky you're getting it. I have the rings right here. 50 bucks? It's pretty pricey. One engagement ring, one wedding ring, from the same guy. What's this mark here? Maker's mark, usually traceable. That one came from Hartfield's Jewelry down on Broadway. Thanks for the tip. Well, would that be relevant to us though? She probably was wearing her wedding ring for so many years already. Does this mark mean anything? Hallmark. Gives you an idea of the quality. Hmm. 
What have you got on the guy who brought these in? Goes by the name of Percy B. Shelley. Gave an address. Shelley? 15 Poland Street, London, Tulair County. Can you give us a description of the man who pawned these rings? I'm not sure. Medium height, medium build, dark hair, I think. Sorry. He just had one of those forgettable faces. We'll be in touch, Mr. Bremner. Yeah, it might be even more suspicious if you remembered him so well, because he sees people coming in and out all day long. Shelley! Wasn't that the name of the poet or the author who wrote that poem we saw before? Could this be a fake name? I don't know. Can you drive to this one? And where exactly are we going? Oh, he gave an address, but we're not going there. I guess we gotta go to the rail yard first? Okay. I don't know the first name of the author Shelley. So I don't know if it's Percy or not. We have a problem. We could have the local troopers check out the Tulare County address. The address is bogus. The purpose having fun with us. The guy who's been sending the Dahlia letters is also the guy who pawned these rings. How do you figure that one? Percy Bysshe Shelley wrote the poem that came with the Dahlia letter. If the Dahlia letters are genuine, then the man who killed Elizabeth Short may have also killed Deirdre Muller. And how do we prove that, Belt? Skipper ain't gonna like this one bit. We're gonna have to rely on this guy tripping up on his own vanity. Are you so unconfident in your own skills? That's kind of sad. But we've let so many people die so far, and we're not really hey, getting Gray, anywhere. Follow me. We should keep this development with the rings under our hat until we speak with the captain. We're all on the same team, Rusty. Chain of command, Phelps. The skipper will decide who needs to know. You got it? I get it, Rusty. I just don't like it. You're in the military. You of all people should know about command. Hard, isn't it? Yeah. I look after all the rail depots. What have you got? The Negro, Nelson Gaines, called it in. I came down here to make sure him and the other guy, Jameson, stuck around. Jameson found the body? Something like that. Guy makes me sick. We'll talk to the coroner. Keep an eye on both of them. The witness who found the body makes you sick? Hey, can you give me a hand? I got a hard case I need to break. Okay, so not naked again. It's so weird though, because if that guy, if the killer really just wanted the woman dead, he could have just pushed her into the tracks, but no! He waited till the train passed and then mauled her with an iron, a tire iron. Presumably, anyway. What have we got here? White female, approximately 40 years of age, lipstick smudges on the face, but no writing, at least nothing legible. A blunt force trauma to the temple, nose, and eye regions. Ligature marks point to the probable cause of death being strangulation. Any idea of the time of death? From her temperature, after midnight would be my guess. This killer seems to go after... women? During their vulnerable times. Like when they're drunk. The smell? Very good. There is the usual evacuation smell. But it appears she's been living rough for quite some time. Very strong smell of alcohol. Uh, the autopsy will tell, but I would assume that she was inebriated. Yeah. Alcohol, again. No ring. So ring might not be a necessary component in this? Oh, this poor woman. Oh. Another missing ring. Certainly seems I've been swabbing a lot of bare fingers recently. Can you be more exact about the time of death? No later than 2 a.m. The state the body was in, a one or two hour window is the best I can do. Hmm. No later than 2 a.m.? Late at night? Well, yeah, if you want to commit a murder, late at night is probably the best time to do it. When no one's looking. Blood splatter on the carriage. She must have been struck while standing up. Oh my god. How hard would you have to be struck for the blood to splatter like that? Ah. Oh. Another bar! How are you? 
Look at it. Maybe someone at Mensch's will remember her. Mensch's. Ninth and Main. This is a chit for personal items, not booze. It's an angle worth investigating. Two large suitcase, small suitcase, bedroll, pillow, plain bed sheet, three photo frames, hairbrush. Yeah, that's not really liquor store stuff. Huh. Maybe she has a friend there? Or maybe she's just writing stuff on a random piece of paper? Dear Evelyn, I hope that this letter finds you in a better way than when we last parted. Bitter words were exchanged. You had taken too much liquor, and we both know what that makes you become. But I am not writing to harass and accuse. I am writing to apologize. I was heartbroken seeing what had become of my little girl. Oh, the father. And what she is doing to herself. You are destroying your body and your soul with liquor, Evelyn. And it is hand... hander? Harder, and it is harder for me to watch you than you can imagine. Someone was trying to get her to come home. But only God Almighty above us has the right to judge, and so I beg your forgiveness. I have been in contact with a sanitarium here in Connecticut on your behalf. They say your condition is an illness, Evelyn, and that it can be treated. I you only need to check to yourself in. It will not... If it's ripped up, does that mean that she didn't like the contents of the letter? But it's ripped up so neatly, too. Sounds like it's from the dad. We could go over to the lot and see what they know about her. That's gonna be difficult, Cole. The Keystone Studio lot closed back in 41. Oh, then why does she have this for so long? Is that the only identification she had? Because they mentioned that there was a, what, evacuation smell? Well, we have a few leads. That seems to be it. Wouldn't park okay. there if I were you. Game well. Deserted. Rail yard. Not deserted, but it's not a place people go to at night. Park. Alleyways. Phelps, badge 1247. How could I help, Detective? I need an address on Levine's Liquor, closest store to the Santa Fe Avenue rail yard, if possible. Just a moment, Detective. Closest store would be the one at 939 South Hope Street. Thanks, ma'am. The lady on the other end of the phone does it so fast. But I bet back in the day, it took quite a while to flip through the, the yellow pages and whatnot. Is that our car? Yeah, it is. Which car did we come in? Not this one, but it's ours now. Oh! How come it's... It's not crossed out? I heard the noise earlier, though. Maybe we come back later? Yeah, for now, there's definitely nothing. Okay. Locations. The bar, the liquor store, the bar. Sure. Actually, I think we should go to the... The liquor store first, because we know it's close by, right? Yeah, I don't think it really matters. Whatever. <laughs> Let's get out of here. How do we even get out of here? How do we get out of here? Crime scene. Whoa, that's actually really far away. Hold up. Can we go check out what this hidden vehicle is just along the way? Because, yeah. Okay. Your partner will drive to a custom location if you have one set. Okay. Let's just keep going straight and see if we can turn sometime. Read that those goddamn Chinese want to sell the relief food that we're sending them? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I read about that. These people are starving. They can't do that. They want to sell the food to fund the civil war against the communists. Really? 
Guess that's okay then. <laughs> Armies can't fight without food. Spend all your money on weapons, but you still have to have the will to fight. Fortunately, the Reds will win in China. Watch your mouth. You know what you're saying? The people of this country overthrew a king. You think the Chinese will balk at an emperor if they are starving? In the central unit, 459 suspects to be taken into custody at the trolley station on Lucas Avenue. Stand by for further. Okay, we're gonna go to that one. But I want to check out what this hidden vehicle thingy here is. There's one here, right? It's... it's right... right here. Right here. Ooh, if we answered a dispatch call but we're not using the same car, is that okay? I hope so. What are we looking at here? This one? These cars? There is no one here. It looks like a nice car. Chrysler Airflow. Eh, maybe it's not the right one, but whatever, who cares. Let's just go to the street crime. Where is it? I got no clue. Do you want to drive us there, Rusty? You know the way, you can drive. I don't see cars. Well, there might be a car around the corner, but whatever. <laughs> You're not gonna drive to the custom location, are you? No, you got me here. Good. Uh, parking lot? Dealership? You should have iced those folks. You leave no witnesses, you stay out of the park. Not riding all the way to Santa Ana and then on to Cincinnati with you pissing in my but ear. But I'm tired of always being on the lam. I don't have a choice. A stick-up charge is still a stick-up charge, and I ain't going back inside. You're both coming with me. Don't do anything stupid. Oh. Wait, what is this one about? I missed the, the full description earlier from the dispatch call. Whoa! People! People! Oh my god, that... That pedestrian. Whoa, she's shooting us back! That's... That's new. Although I guess we should get used to it. You gotta get me closer. I'm trying. I'm trying, okay? It takes some effort. And we gotta lean towards the left too if we want Rusty to shoot. Oh my god. I'm surprised we're still alive. Move, move. They're really, really fast. I'll try to shoot out his tires. Wish me luck. Hit it. Clean this asshole off the road. I'm trying, but you gotta work with me here. Hit him, Cole. Spin him out. Oh, come on, get that one tire. I can't. I don't have any. Ugh. I can't hit him like this. Don't go to sleep on me. Get me back in close. I'm trying really hard here. Rusty. Oh! <laughs> what the hell? Surpri I know, right? Uh, I'm surprised that they're not dead. <laughs> hey. Hands behind your head. Car 11K calling KGPL. Code 4 at the Lucas Avenue trolley station. The 459 suspects are in custody. Roger, 11K. All units, code 4 on the 459 suspects at the Lucas Avenue trolley station. Ooh, that's another one down. <laughs> that was quite an exciting one, huh? Those people were crazy drivers. Holy crap. That was just. That was. That was insane. Okay. Are we close to. Did we end up going to the bar? We didn't actually go anywhere yet, did we? Liquor store? Bar? Liquor store. Fine. Oh, we'll be fine. It's probably just gonna be a straight road. Okay. Man, earlier, one of the pedestrians. Come on, if you see a car, get out of the way. I don't want to kill you. And I don't want you to ruin my rating either. 
I think we did a lot of damage this time, though. City damage, so that's not good. What is this? There's a crane there. Huh. Whoa! What's that guy doing? Don't mess with me, okay? I'm... I'm a fast driver here. Hang a right. Yup. We're fine. We're fine. We can use the siren. But what's the fun in that? We gotta mix among the, the normal cars here. Yup. Oh no! Oh, are you kidding me? It's a dead end! Oh, that that's a bummer. No, it's okay. We just did one, so I want to get to the, the bar today. Sorry, excuse me. Oh, sorry about your umbrella. Up ahead, you turn left. Okay. Straight, straight ahead. Atta boy, up there you go right now. Thanks for the the driving instructions, Rusty. It's really helpful because it's hard to focus on driving here. Oh, I might have turned a little bit. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have made that left. There we go. The liquor store. What can I do for you? LAPD, Phelps and Galloway. We're making inquiries into the murder of Evelyn Summers. Evelyn? She's dead? You knew Evelyn Summers, Mr. Robbins. Yes, I knew Evelyn. I was a good friend of her ex-husband. She kept some of her stuff here. Can you show us, please? Sure. Come this way. Ex-husband. So we can't charge the husband this time. This guy looks like the guy from the grocery store. You got some fine stock here, Mr. Robin. You know, you let us take some for the road, this case might get solved a lot quicker. He's joking, Mr. Robbins. <laughs> He's like, oh, I don't know how to answer that. Oh, hmm, she didn't have a place to live at. Mom? The back? Nope. He didn't say anything. He just brought us here and that's it. She wasn't always such a loner. Oh, I can't really tell who's who. I guess the one in the center is her and then maybe mom and dad and uncle. I don't know. Husband? Maybe that's it. Evelyn was reading Aristotle? Evelyn wasn't stupid. The only stupid thing about her was her need to drink. Aristotle metaphysics. And she was borrowing books from Grosvenor McCaffrey. Huh? Someone with a lot of potential, but they end up on... They fall on hard times, just like the previous person. I'm guessing Evelyn hadn't held down a job for quite some time before she was killed. Well, the name of the case, it was Studio Secretary, right? So she might have been a secretary. The movie set studio. Rawlings Bowling Alley. Maybe Evelyn did something other than drink in her spare time. Rawlings. I know that place. Corner of Ninth and Grand. A lot of cops bowl there on Tuesday nights. Wait, so she likes drinking, and the owner of the liquor store is letting her stay here? I think he's a kind guy if that's the case, but I don't know if it's helping her situation. When exactly did Evelyn work in the pictures? A few years ago. She worked in legal copyrights for music. Oh, hey, you should come help me, Evelyn! <laughs> Oh my god, she has to use a broken mirror? Jeez, this is... 
Like, it's nice that she has a place, but this is basically the equivalent of the hobo camp. But in a liquor store. Oh, he's not here. Uh, do we go interview him then? Nothing out in the alleyways? No, I guess not. Yeah, was she actively trying to quit alcoholism or anything like that? Because she sees these bottles literally every day. Literally every day. That can't be good for trying to get rid of the habit. Staff only. Yeah, okay. We're trying to account for Evelyn's movements yesterday. She came by in the morning. A social visit to pick up some of her things? She had a couple of bucks and bought a quart of rye. And so she's not trying to quit at all. Mmm, seems like the truth. Bought some. We don't know what her... Did we see money in the wallet? Not really. Yeah, okay. Any idea where the money came from? She didn't mention it. But she did say the booze was a present for a boy. She said they had been fighting and she had to make it up to him. By buying alcohol. A boy. Not her ex-husband, I assume. Were you and Evelyn close, Mr. Robbins? How many people will be sad she's gone? I'll be one of the few. Yeah, well, I, I believe his story at face value because he's letting her stay here. Let's check out the percentages, though. Hold up. 99.6. Do I believe you? He looks sad. Okay. We got the impression that Evelyn had been sleeping rough of late. It became difficult for me to have her staying here. Her mother was trying to get her back on the straight and narrow. She's old now. And to be honest, you have to have a good reason to want to get back on. Well, maybe the letter was from the mom. I forgot if it mentioned the gender specifically. Do you know a friend of Evelyn's by the name of McCaffrey? Not personally. So you know him. Hmm. What do you mean by not personally? Would you like to elaborate? We are struggling for leads, Robbins. Did she know McCaffrey? She idolized him. From what I gather, the feeling was far from mutual. He seems oh. to peddle a revolutionary stance, fixing the ills of society. You could see how it would appeal to down and outs like Evelyn. Thanks for your help, Mr. Robbins. No problem. Hey, I'd like to make arrangements for the funeral. You think I could get in touch with Evelyn's mother? Put in a call to the watch commander at Central Station, Mr. Robbins. He'll be trying to reach the next of kin. Thanks. Get the guy, huh? Evelyn never hurt anybody. I'm calm. I will. Oh. See, yeah, it's kind of... It's, it's rough when people you know just randomly... Die like that. What do you think? I'm pretty sure we didn't join all the dots at that crime scene, Phelps. Let's go back. Oh, did I miss something? Uh, if you would like to bring us back. Actually, I know I didn't miss the clues. Oh, there was a witness I didn't talk to, right? Oh, yeah, I went to use the you game well and then I forgot to go back. That's right! <laughs> uh, where is he? Where is he? The beat cop mentioned that he detained someone here so that we could talk to them. <gasps> I completely left them hanging. <laughs> Detective Phelps and Galloway, homicide. 
Can you tell me exactly what happened? We were shunting cars over to the main line when I saw this man here lying on top of this woman. The woman wasn't moving and seemed to be in a bad way. There's two what men time here. Is this? About 7.30 this morning, sir. Thanks for your help. Have you given Patrolman Hart your details? I have, sir. Thank you. You can go now. Sorry. Sorry I kept you here for so long. I just... Whoa, I... I'm not used to having witnesses at the crime scene for homicide. Yeah, for traffic? That was something that happened pretty often, but not for homicide. So I just... <laughs> just completely left my mind. But who's the guy you're talking about here? This guy? A creeper? Detective Phelps, LAPD homicide. John Ferdinand Jameson. We need you to answer some questions, John. If you don't mind, I prefer Ferdinand. Don't push your luck, knucklehead. What were you doing to the body, Ferdinand? Are you sure you won't be upset? Try me, Ferdinand. I don't want to know. I was kissing her. Oh my god. It's not against the law. Shut up. There's no Take law your against it. Like a man. Turn out your pockets, Ferdinand. Lipstick. Beautiful day. Classic no trouble. Was that the same brand as before? Hmm. This creepy guy. Is this yours, Ferdinand? No. I found it near her purse. I thought she could use some lipstick. Rusty, stop! Don't hit him. So earlier, when we looked at the body and it said that there was lipstick marks, that's actually just a red herring then. It's just this guy being completely creepy and disrespectful. But we know that he didn't do it because that's way too obvious. Plus, he was doing that whole thing at 7.30 in the morning and she died at 2 a.m. You uh, went through her purse? It wasn't like she needed it. I took a look. <laughs> Whoa, he's so like stone-faced. What's going on? Actually, he's really stone-faced right now, and I'm not sure. Sounds like a lie. <laughs> uh, I'll ask the community. Truth? Really? It seems like he's not looking at me. It looks like he's consistently looking away. Did you take any money? Wasn't any to take. I found her lipstick and her matchbook over on the mat. Not much else. But that's... That's probably because she's not rich. She doesn't have money. As opposed to someone taking the money, I think. You found the body? Yes, I did. I work here. I was coming off shift and headed home. Why didn't you report the body, Jameson? Do you know how this is gonna look to a jury? A jury? What gives? I, I could tell that she was dead. I came through here about midnight last night. She wasn't here then. Let me belt him again. You're under arrest, Jameson. We'll see how this plays out. Until then, you can think a little on how you'd like to be treated if you were found dead. I'm telling you, it's not illegal. Me and some friends of mine... Oh my god. Clyde, can you get this sack of shit into a cell? I'll deal with him later. Sure, Rusty. Maybe it's a good thing that we just left them waiting here for a little bit, huh? What an asshole. That guy was messed up. I'm stumped. Ideas? I say we check out Mensch's place. By the smell, this broad spent a good chunk of time hopping bars. Yeah, I need to get back to asking Rusty for advice more often, because <laughs> we could have just missed this entire crime scene thing. Jeez. Although, evidence-wise, did we actually get anything new? We know that she had lipstick in her purse. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Okay, well, let's get to the bar then. You're behind the wheel. Yeah, now it's crossed out. Fine. Where are we headed? Thank God. Drink, fellas. Phelps, Galloway, homicide. We need to ask you some questions concerning Evelyn Summers. I'm Walter Mensch. Evelyn Summers? What is it now? You knew Evelyn? As well as I wanted to know Evelyn. She's a pain in the ass, always coming in here, catching drinks, never had any money. 
She was in just a couple of nights ago. Did she ever tell you where she was staying? I don't know. I think she was living rough. She had that kind of stunk about her. Who did she drink with? Uh, a bunch of these guys. Ask around. There is a boy that she was trying to impress. What's your name? Grosvenor McCaffrey. Mind if I ask you some questions, Mr. McCaffrey? I'm just a starving writer, detective. What do you want to ask about? Evelyn Summers and why she was found beaten and strangled in the rail depot on Santa Fe. Okay. I see your point. How well did you know her? I can't say that I knew her. It was more like I was aware of her. Hey, it's actually a good thing that we went to the liquor store first, because otherwise, we would not know who the hell this guy is. This guy looks well off. Known associate of the murder victim. Do you have a criminal record, Mr. McCaffrey? Nothing serious. I've had a few skirmishes. Oh, 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 oh. Do you want to save me some time, or do you want me to look up your file? Industrial disputes. Strikes, workers' rights, that kind of thing. A regular fifth columnist. Nice to meet you, comrade. Yeah, the, the liquor store owner earlier was like, oh, he's kind of the revolutionary type. You say you barely knew Evelyn? Yes, that is correct. That is... Oh, hold on. If we didn't go to the liquor store first, then we wouldn't have the book here. Right? Yeah. Oh, wow. So, really good thing that we came here last. You're lying, McCaffrey. You looked down your nose at Evelyn, but you knew her, and you have some idea of what happened. I hope you're holding aces. I'm telling you again, I barely knew the woman. You're wrong. Unless if she stole this from you. Why would you lend her your book on metaphysics if you only knew her in passing? It was more than that. A renaissance man like yourself lending his books to his acolytes. She hounded me about that goddamn book. And then she lifts it from my apartment and lies to my face that she didn't take it. As if she could even comprehend any of it. She actually did steal it. <laughs> I saw her go into a hotel with Tiernan last night. They had booze in a paper bag. He's your man. Thank you for the information, Mr. McCaffrey. Tiernan. I don't like the cut of this guy's jib. This guy's weird. He seems pretty uncompassionate. I mean, he just heard about how some woman died and he doesn't really... He doesn't care at all. Want to drive a truck today? <laughs> this thing is gonna be so slow. You gotta be kidding. <laughs> We're driving this. Oh, hold on, hold on. There's a. Um... Oh, there's a game wall thing we can use here. Out in the front. Back inside the bar. Here. Phelps, one, two, four, seven. How could I help, Detective? Are there any messages for me? A message from Captain Donnelly, return to Central, go to. Thank you. That's so vague. It's vague. But whatever is happening there is probably not super urgent because whoever we need to see, they're probably already safe in the interview room and whatnot. So I'll put that off for now. Is this my car? It's not, but it is now. No, it, this is my car, right? Yeah, but they marked it differently. Where are we going? No, let's go to the bowling alley first. Okay. All right. Hopefully it's close by. I wonder how it would have played out if we didn't go to the liquor store first. Because we wouldn't have been able to accuse this guy, and we wouldn't have been able to get the clue about Tiernan. Huh. 
That does seem like it could be pertinent. I'm guessing Tiernan is the boy that she was buying drinks for? Why did she bring a bowling pin home anyway? <laughs> Hello, Rusty. Two on your usual lane? I'm Detective Feltz. Homicide. You must be new. <laughs> What's your shoe size? We're conducting an investigation, ma'am. Do you know the name Evelyn Summers? Sounds like I should. Oh, maybe it could be Jimmy's friend. Jimmy? James Tiernan. He's a pin setter. One day he introduced me to a lady after work. It stuck in my mind because she was much older, too old for him. Where can we find Jimmy, Florence? He'll be hopping around the lanes toward the back. Thanks, ma'am. Let's go get him. I'm willing to bet that he's gonna run away as soon as he sees us, because that's how it always goes. I think he's a bit hey, of Evelyn a is 40, so this guy might be in his 20s? In the back, right? Down the left side of the alleys. Oh. The women don't find you handsome? Food was you mean like over there? I'm sorry, excuse me. This is nope. a tasty burger. <laughs> Do you mean like the door here? Is there anything else here for us to look at, though? Oh, no. Wrong one. There's no music here. Okay. Fine. Tiernan! LAPD! <laughs> Sometimes these sequences are a little bit predictable. <laughs> Ooh, that's a nice car. A little bit small. For? Get after him. We might go faster if we weren't carrying the extra weight. Oh! Hey, this car is nice and fast. These are flashy cars to be parked outside a bowling alley. The lanes attract a fast-living individual with money to burn, Cole. Or a middle-aged individual with the need to feel virile. Keep it steady and I'll try to bust his tires. This car is really fast. Another runner. Or at least we've got a suspect. Why do they always run? I'm sure we've got the wrong person in more than one of these homicides, but they always seem to land it. You know, your theories are not airtight by any means, Phelps. Phelps, you gotta get me closer. I like how Phelps actually said what I was Nick, thinking out loud. Clean this asshole off the road. Because we've been talking about this for so long. If this isn't the killer, we can at least get him for reckless endangerment. That's unless he runs into a wall and saves us all the trouble. Why do they always run? Hey, this car is awesome. I like it. But it's not a police car, unfortunately. Put your hands where I can see them. Bring him back to Central. And that's it. We caught him, but we're not even questioning him, so I guess now would be the time to go back to Central. I love this car. Can we keep driving on it? You know the way. You can drive. And where exactly are we going? Back to LAPD. It's only a two-person car, though, so... If you bought groceries or something, you wouldn't even have room to put it anywhere. Look at how fast that is. I'll buy myself a new car once I get a promotion. Moving up to a 45. I want to stop him with one Why are we back here? The captain wants to see me. Downstairs with Ray Pinker and Carruthers. Is there another letter? You know you got it made if you can get that Well, maybe that's why they didn't say anything because it's sort of top secret. The women don't find you handsome. I think we bust they in there and find, find the goddamn your handies. <laughs> if women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Yeah, sure, sure. 
What's this about, Captain? Ray and Mal have some concerns over the Henry and Muller cases, which I don't want aired outside of this room. The evidence is solid, Captain. I agree, Rusty. It's just that corpses keep piling up. Copycats. I've been banging the same drum. But the notes and the lipstick messages. Evelyn Summers, cartel classic Carmine. Each woman, same brand, same color. Teresa Terrelson didn't have a lipstick message. Technically, you're right, Rusty. She didn't have any lipstick. But she did have a message. We found it beneath her dress, scraped with a sharp stick. What did it <gasps> say? What? You sure you want to know, Ray? As far as we can be sure, it said cunt BD. That's one way of looking at it. Looking at what? Cunt is all about access, Phelps. You're married, so yours is mortgaged. Some of us like to pay by installments. This guy doesn't like to pay at all. Why are you so angry, Mal? Because I just had to fire one of my assistants. He was a friend of Jameson's. God knows what he might have been up to. Captain, what? We have good leads in the Summers case. But it's up to you to decide how we proceed. Keep this under your hat for now. And to follow up on Evelyn Summers, I want daily reports. Evelyn's dress. Is the reason why she was not undressed? Because they had no lipstick. So there was no point in undressing her. Back to the Summers case. Get an address for McCaffrey. He'll have blown the bar. I'll meet you outside. Okay. Yeah, because we were thinking about how... Fuck you! What? Is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Do you want to fight? This town is going straight to hell. Do you want to fight? Fight you. <laughs> Jesus. We're at the police station, not a bar. What the hell? Made me lose my train of thought. Is there a phone here? Oh, we can just ask the front desk, probably. I want to make homicide. You know you make it if you can get that desk. Operator, give me dispatch. Putting you through now. Phelps, batch 1247. How could I help, detective? I need an address for a Grosvenor McCaffrey. Grosvenor McCaffrey. Apartment 6, 126 Yale Street, between Ord and Alpine. Thanks for your help. As I was saying earlier, before that guy rudely interrupted me... That person... Uh, I forgot the victim's names already. Teresa Haraldson? She had a dress on, and they wrote the message on the dress. So, technically all of them had a message. But we know! We know that she left her purse at home, and she left the lipstick at home. Which is probably the sole reason why she didn't have a lipstick message. Oh. Damn it, and I thought, here I thought that, you know, maybe it wasn't so grim, but it's still looking really grim. Let me pose a question. Depends. What you got to do with? Morals. Would it bother you to put the wrong person away? Depends. On what? On whether anyone except the poor son of a bitch in the slammer ever found out. Hey, why is this not crossed out? Oh, can we interview the guy? The guy that we brought back here? Maybe that's who we're missing? I'm at a loss. Call me a red basher, but I think we should look in on that fellow traveler from the bar. That McCaffrey guy. Yeah, we should, but I'm wondering why... You know you made it. What about Tiernan? He's not here. This room? No. Okay, uh... I feel like I'm missing something, but what... Viewing room? This one can't be it. I no. Homicide. I mean, you know you've made it if you got Maybe there's someone I can talk to? Back down here? The women don't find you handsome? They should at least find you handy. No? Oh, there was a phone right here. Hey, don't mind this me. is no time to talk, detective. Far too much to do. There's more work to do here, Phelps. Leave me be. Okay, I guess that's that. I don't know why it's not crossed off, but maybe we'll be hey, back later. Fuck you! Shut up. It gets old when you say it more than once, okay? Alright, sorry Rusty. We are... We're back on track with the investigation here. I'll drive. 
Can I drive? McCaffrey's apartments. All right. This. Whoa, it's really, really fast. This car. Straight ahead. We're going back to the McCaffrey lead, but even though we we got Tiernan, we're not asking him anything yet. That's a little bit. Yeah. Maybe we'll bring McCaffrey back and then we'll question them both at the same time. Hopefully, anyway. Well, it's a little fast here. Take the next right. Right? So wait for the next turning and go right. Sorry, missed it. Oh, it's right here. Look at how fast this car is. Ooh, he lives in a nice neighborhood. Look at that. Right here. Come on. Close enough, right? Close enough? Sorry! Whoa there! My poor car. My beautiful car. Oh, come on! No? Over here? There we go. So he claims that Evelyn Summers stole the book from his apartment. How did she get inside again? Did he mention? McCaffrey is in apartment six. Is he gonna be home? Doesn't matter, because we're gonna search around anyway. No elevator. Six is Ooh. It's a guy from the papers. Solve that big case. We are on level three. But there's no Oh, okay. Ooh. McCaffrey. Running on a hangover, McCaffrey? Why? Why? Why are you running too? You didn't run when I saw you earlier at the bar. Oh, oh. Get the gun out. Get the gun out. Forget about this. Oh, man, you gotta be really fit for this job. So much running around. Ooh, shoot! Is he getting into a car? No. You a runner, McCaffrey? Stay and fight the good fight! Yeah, exactly! You're a writer, not a... Not a marathon runner. Come back here. I'll get you. Don't you worry. Just a matter of time. Give it up, LAPD! I can't catch up with him. Ooh. McCaffrey, you're under arrest on suspicion of murdering Evelyn Summers. Search the place, Phelps. We're looking for something solid that ties McCaffrey to the crime scene. Okay. Again. Not interrogating him just yet. Looks like a normal house. The last bastion. Incidental. Well, he is a writer, so having books is super normal. Even if he wasn't a writer, that would be super normal anyway. A drinker? He's got quite a few bottles around. Oh? Wait. I'm trying to see if anyone could have broken into this house. I don't see broken windows. 
Huh. Again, I'm not convinced at all that this guy did it. He said he was at home. He said he didn't know her. And we have the book. Let's see Carruthers argue his way out of this one. Tire iron from the bowling alley. To wrap this thing up. It's got to be McCaffrey. Unless Terranen set him up. You don't think that asshole Jameson could have done it, do you? No, Jameson was that pervert. Uh, whoever did it, at least it wasn't that Dahlia fuck. How do you know that McCaffrey didn't do the Dahlia? We have a list of over 200 suspects. His name was never on it. I feel like... I feel like Rusty must be questioning this a little bit, too. The second half of the letter. Take long before you are healed, and you can come home. I have put your things back into your old room, with a lock on the door for your privacy. And you can come and go as you please. I will care for you, and you can return to your normal life. I know your address has changed, so I cannot be sure this letter will find you. But I pray that it does, and that you consider what I have said. I love you very much, and I pray every night that you are safe, and that one day, you will knock on my door, and the rift between us will be mended. Torn from the letter we found beside the body. At the very least, I'd say it ties McCaffrey to the scene. With love and understanding, your mother, Augusta Summers. But why would he be so stupid to put it here, though? Again, feels like a setup. I don't think this is going to help us. Every single case so far has been feeling like a setup. But... This house? I think it would be pretty difficult to plant evidence in... into. Unless if the guy... the killer knew this guy. There is no evidence of break-ins anywhere. We heard the music. Are we good? Oh no. Then this means, again, this time, we're gonna have to pick the guy who did it. And it could be Tiernan, it could be McCaffrey, or it could be... Neither of them. And if it's neither of them, we still gotta apprehend the guy. So, it's not, um, no. Oh, the captain might be yelling at us again. Hey, this car is nice and fast, so I don't mind driving. Sunset. Rusty? Why am I not going in? Oh, I gotta wait for him first? What? If you think the list is exhaustive, Rusty, who am I to argue? Listen, let's just work the case at hand, shall we? Then we can sit down and put all the puzzle pieces together at a later date. I'll hold you to that. No, I think even Rusty at this point must be having doubts. There's too many weird coincidences. Swing left. Swinging. Swinging. Sorry! Are you on the start or what? Take the next left. Uh, this le here? Okay, I remember we weren't that far from the station. So this shouldn't be a long ride. Oh, boy, up there you go right now. Okay. Back in the tunnel. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. Goodbye. Hey, now we have a clear view. No glass in the way, right? <laughs> it's all good. It's all good, okay? It's all good. Take the next right. Sunset is actually not a really common time for us to be seeing, huh? I don't really remember seeing the street lights being on before. You sure you can make it stick with one of these suspects, gentlemen? It's either McCaffrey or Tiernan, sir. I think Jameson is an aberration. All right. I'll deal with that degraded lunatic myself. He's got some fearful retribution coming. Tiernan isn't one, McCaffrey isn't two. I want a confession from one of them. Don't fail me, young Phelps. Yes, Master Captain, I won't fail you. Gosh. Uh, one, one and two? Half. Start with room one. Fair in love and war. Another time, huh? Yeah, the bum took a swipe at me. 
Put him down with my sack. Tiernan. Why did you run, Tiernan? I was the last one to see Evelyn that night. I knew you would think it was me. What's this pattern of people being like, no. I'm scared you'll think it's me, so I ran away. <laughs> I'm standing around saying nothing. Is this some kind of mental torture? Do you find it torturous? Is that blood on your face? I hope not. Can you describe your relationship with Evelyn? I, I barely knew Evelyn. Yeah, that is so true. <laughs> Can we nail him? Liquor purchase? For a boy. Is that... Is that good enough, though? For a boy. I guess we gotta try. Oh, no! We can just use this one. This one's better. Yeah. Keep lying to me and I'll have you charged and in front of a grand jury before your feet touch the ground. <laughs> How can you possibly prove Evelyn and I were more than friends? The other guy sold you out. McCaffrey gave you up, Tiernan. He says he saw you go into your hotel with Evelyn. I met Evelyn at the public library. We would read for a while and then go for a drink. Last night, we went back to my hotel room and had some more to drink. I, I must have passed out. I woke up and she was gone. What time was this? Around midnight, maybe later. And there's no one who can confirm this? No, there isn't. I knew you wouldn't believe me. I just looked at his age, 24 and 40. That is quite a difference. Aristotle's Metaphysics, the book that belonged to McCaffrey. McCaffrey saw her looking at her once and laughed in her face. And you're saying Evelyn stole it? She wanted something of his. Is anybody making coffee soon? That sounds true enough, actually. 98.7. Oh. <laughs> we have the points. Faith in the Lord. Do you, it sounds like the truth, but 98.7, uh, whatever, let's just use it. Oh, I would have actually put truth, because he's not, he's not looking away at all. But everyone else seems to think differently here. We either hang this on you or McCaffrey. You better give us something. <laughs> well, McCaffrey's been in trouble with the law before. I mean, he always makes out it was some kind of labor dispute, but, you know, I'm, I'm not so sure. <laughs> you and Evelyn were drinking together last night, and she had no other place to stay. I don't know what happened last night. I, I don't remember. Can we say he didn't? Oh, he's looking away now. I don't remember what happened last night. <laughs> I don't remember what happened last night. What was the whole movie lot thing? This one wasn't really relevant to anything, huh? Yeah, secretary. What secretary? <laughs> what did you say? I forgot already. You and Evelyn were drinking together last night. She had no other place to stay. I don't know what happened last night. I don't remember. Hmm. No, but she she bought the liquor. She bought the alcohol for him, according to the liquor store owner. Would this one work though? Cause it doesn't say the time on the notes. You're lying, Tiernan. You've been fighting with her. You fought and I'm not lying! She got up and left, that was it! I'm not sure about this one. I feel like it's doubt or lie for sure, but like what here can actually... Can we still use intuition here? <laughs> uh, well, it's gotta be this one, I guess. She left, but yeah. she came back. Oh. She bought you a quart of whiskey to make it up to you. She told the liquor store owner. You're in deep trouble, buddy. She said she loved me. She wanted to care for me. 
but you'd never stop talking about McCaffrey. <laughs> McCaffrey was a writer, and McCaffrey was a hero. McCaffrey cared for the little guy. Did you kill her, Tiernan? I might as well have. I don't think he did it. I kicked her out. She had nowhere to go. <laughs> she could have gone back to the liquor store. Do you own a car, Tiernan? No, I don't. Hmm. Have access to a lug wrench? No, we use a lot of them to clear jams in the pin setting machines. Yeah, that's true, because the tire iron we saw. Oh, wait, what? We saw it. It said the bowling alley name on it. Oh. Um. 99.6. <laughs> Hold up. Yeah, yeah. He's not lying about it because it's true. It's true, but he's looking shifty. The tire iron stained with blood. Coroner's report says <sighs> that Evelyn was killed with a wrench. I think you did it and then planted the evidence at McCaffrey's apartment for us to find. We went to his apartment. McCaffrey was up on the roof. Evelyn stole the book. <laughs> McCaffrey went crazy when he found out. He said, he said he would put her out of her misery. He can be very cruel. No, of course we're not charging him yet. Evelyn was missing a ring from her right hand. That's strange. She always wore it. Uh-uh. Big black circular disc with a white E in the middle. It was, it was made from an old typewriter key, a present from the prop department at her old movie studio. Well, that's not even a wedding ring. We're going to talk to McCaffrey. You need to think about what you've told us, Tiernan. You're not in the clear. That's not a wedding ring. No. That's just some random ring then. Oh. So was the whole marital problems angle a red herring? Hmm, I, I really don't feel like either of them did it. You ready to answer some questions? You think I have all the answers? People who run from the police usually have something to hide. Touché, detective. Let's see where this takes us. Okay. Evelyn died sometime around midnight. Remind me, where were you? I was at home, writing. I'm working on a manuscript. That's not something we can... Can we accuse him of lying for that? He's obviously lying, but is it a doubt or a lie? Last night. None of these really have a timing on them. Uh, you saw the victim enter a hotel with someone else on the night of the murder. But we already used this one for Tiernan earlier. I'm trying to psychologically torture you by staring at you. <laughs> ah, I feel like- Whoa! Whoa, okay, I'm not taking this chance. Ask the community. <laughs> Lie? Lie? But half the people got it wrong. No, 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 no. Well, half the people who got it... Mm, we can lie first and see. You're lying, McCaffrey. You were out at the rail yard. And what do you have that proves I was there? Proves you're there? I mean, I guess the, the letter, but... We don't know when she got the letter. How about half of Augusta oh. Summer's last correspondence with her daughter? What are you talking about? After you were done beating Evelyn, you searched her and found her mother's letter. That old lady's anguish amused you. I know nothing about a letter or Evelyn's goddamn mother. So what was it doing on your writing desk? I don't know, but if I didn't put it there, somebody else did. Yeah. Try exercising your powers of deduction on that. 
You know, I get that these guys are being framed, but they're so, like, their attitude is so... You know, it's like an age of corruption right now, right? So if I wanted you to go to jail, you would go to jail. You guys got somewhere you need to be? You're ruining the ambiance. Shut up. We found the lug wrench that Evelyn was battered with in your apartment, and the note from her mother, and your blood-stained clothing. We have you cold, McCaffrey. You think if I could be bothered to murder Evelyn Summers, I would be stupid enough to leave the evidence in my apartment? <laughs> he's right! He's right! And I have no doubt at this point that he's being framed. <laughs> he's right! God damn it. We found the lug wrench, the note, and your blood-stained clothing. You think I would leave that in my apartment and be that stupid? He's right, he's got a point here, okay? He's got a point. No. Oh. Threats of violence against the victim made by Grovner McCaffrey. But that has nothing... Mm, okay, yeah. If he if he's saying he didn't do it, this is saying he did say he would do it. Okay. I don't believe you, Grovner. The evidence says that you killed her. You can prove that I wanted to kill Evelyn? I don't think he did it, but he probably said, I'll kill you, bitch, or something. Tiernan is prepared to testify that you threatened Evelyn's life in his presence. Self-preservation. That's understandable. Okay, I'll level with you. Tiernan killed Evelyn. He came to me for help. What? I listened to him, and he explained why he did it. Tiernan went to you for help. You expect me to buy that? That's how it went down. I told him he made a terrible mistake, but he would be throwing his life away if he went to the cops. I took his things and told him I would dispose of them. But you didn't. Speak to Tiernan. He'll give it up. What? Are they all just lying to... <laughs> I don't know who's saying the truth anymore. What the hell is going on here? Do we have information here? Phone? You think the vice boys get any on the side? Operator, give me R and I. We are right at the How LAPD. Phelps, one, two, four, seven. How could I help, Detective? We ran the light on Olympic, and we finally I need the jacket on, on a Grosvenor McCaffrey. Just a moment, Detective. Jacket. McCaffrey was formerly under surveillance by the Red Squad. Convictions for petty theft, dishonorable discharge from the army during training at Syracuse. Assault on a local woman. Whoa. Says he almost beat the woman to death. Whoa. Thanks. Whoa. Whoa, that's... That's enlightening information. But I guess we'll talk to Tiernan first. Say, Phelps, do you mind if I get back to what I was doing? You spoken to McCaffrey? I can go. It's all been cleared up. Not quite. We have one more question we need to ask, James. Then I think we will be done. Sure. Go ahead. So Evelyn passed out, and you walked out. What happened next? I woke up in the morning, very hungover. I thought Evelyn would have come back. Well, obviously, we just used the one that McCaffrey told us to say he's lying. I know you're lying, James. You went out looking for her. Tell me what really happened. I don't know what you're talking about. How, how can you say I wasn't in that hotel room? Oh, this guy, this guy just seems like a kid, to be honest. I don't think he did it. But according to McCaffrey, that's what we can ask him about. You wound up at McCaffrey's. You were still incredibly drunk. You passed out on his floor. It's time to tell me what really happened. Oh. McCaffrey woke me up the next morning. Oh, my God. And he showed me the lug wrench and the letter and the box. 
and he said I came in with him last night. He said that I killed Evelyn. And that it was all over the radio. And that he would protect me. And I don't know, detective, for the life of me, I can't remember a goddamn thing. And I was angry with her. Really angry. I could have done it. It wasn't me. Oh, they're making it really tough for me. I'm assuming we can go back to McCaffrey. Wait here. Oh, sh- Cause, um, the way it's going right now, I've sort of been assuming it's McCaffrey. And I think it is McCaffrey, okay? Like, between the two of them, I would choose McCaffrey. Advice? Put the heat to one of them, Phelps. Your choice. She doesn't care. But this guy is not even sure. He's not even sure if he killed her. Not because he thinks he could have done it, but he just doesn't remember what happened that night. Whereas this guy does. And this guy... This guy is much more cunning than the other guy. Can we ask him about his criminal record? Yep. You were in the war? Yes, I was. Seeing the things that I saw. The changes of man. I came back here determined to change things. All I wanted was a pen and an opportunity to speak out. You told us before that you had only minor run-ins with the police. You didn't mention petty theft. I've never been in trouble for violence. That's the salient point here, isn't it? Spam, spam three. <laughs> You're lying, McCaffrey. You have a history of violence towards women. How do you turn a couple parking tickets in a petty theft misdemeanor into an assault charge? Do you think we don't keep records on these things or what? It's in your file. We know all about you and your dishonorable discharge. Beating some poor woman near to death in Syracuse. You've never been in combat, McCaffrey. Your whole life is a fraud. She was a goddamn peasant whore! She tried to steal from my wallet! I could've fought for this country! I could've... You beat her because she stole from you. Because she tried to outsmart you. The ignorant audacity of the bitch! What is a man supposed to do? Sit there and take it? How is a man supposed to call himself a man? And Evelyn Summers, a poor, drunken nobody, stole your book. And she got what was coming to her! Whoa. Ho <laughs> Is that all we got here? Any loops? Rusty, come out here. We gotta discuss. Well, there's no phone anymore, so I don't think we gotta... Um, yeah. So what next? Put the heat to one of them, Phelps. Your choice. Still, I want to charge McCaffrey because he seems like such a violent person. It's kind of the case where, even if we think he didn't do it, he deserves to go to jail for something else. <laughs> you know, for the whole beating another woman almost to death thing, but... Uh, I'll charge him, but I don't think he did it. There's a bit of a disconnect right now because I don't think anything we're doing right now is actually right. For the past few cases, not just this case. But, um... Alright. Yeah, you have a criminal record. You have past history of beating women, and you just said she deserved it. Although I'm pretty sure he meant it in a, I didn't kill her, but I think she deserved it anyway. Not like, I killed her and she deserved it. Not like that, but, um, yeah. I don't think Tiernan did it. Grosvenor McCaffrey, I'm charging you with the murder of Evelyn Summers. She was a sad lady who never hurt anyone except herself. I hope God finds a way to forgive you. Congratulations, boys. You bagged the fine catch. Another red to boot. Grant. Now, I want you to put this business about a repeat offender out of your mind. What? This McCaffrey creature shows no remorse. And neither will the grand jury. You would have to walk a long mile to find a better candidate for an unmarked plot at a prison graveyard. Did you see how smug Cole looked? This guy's a jerk. He looks like a jerk, he acts like a jerk. But being a jerk is not a crime that you should be going to prison for. But it just goes to show that if you act like an asshole, people are gonna treat you like the asshole you are. 
Grosvenor McCaffrey can write a tell-all memoir from his cell on death row. Pfft. Yeah. You know, I, uh, I've been enjoying this so far, but I'm wondering if we're ever going to make any progress on the repeat offender, because I feel like we've already put like five people in jail who probably shouldn't be there. God.